Al Qairawan is one of the most important cities in the Maghreb and North Africa and it's the first Islamic city that was established in the area and it's the fourth holiest city in Islam after Mecca, Medina, Quds and then Al Qairawan. And I'm coming to you from the terrace of the hotel where I'm staying. It's a budget hotel. I paid about 30 Tunisian dinars, so that's about 10 US dollars. I chose this hotel because of its proximity to one of the main doors to enter the old Medina. This is one of the doors to enter the old Medina, so we'll start our adventure here. From up there is where I was taking the video earlier. I'll just uh, walk in and see what we can find in the Medina of Kairouan. I was just walking by uh, one of the stores selling uh, sweets, makrut. This is the Tunisian makrut. It's actually really good. I tried it a couple of times when I was in the old Medina of Tunis. And someone just offered me a piece. So good. And I think he just made it. So it's pretty warm as well. Delicious. This is uh, another door of the Medina. I don't think I've ever noticed uh, a door or an entrance to an old Medina with the actual door. Both of them are actually still there. I was told by other travelers that the Medina of Al Qairawan is a lot quieter than the other Medinas and I completely agree. I love all of the new colors, unlike the blue and yellow that you see almost in every Medina in Tunis. Here, there are some new colors like light blue instead of dark blue, light blue again. And they also have this beautiful light green. And then we've got fancier designs for doors here. I also noticed that there are a lot of small community mosques, masjid. So this one right here, Masjid Ibn Ibn Qirat, Masjid Ibn Qirat, and it looks like it's smaller than than you know an actual mosque. It probably would fit like 10, 20 people at best, and I've seen at least three or four of those. They do have a lot of community mosques and it feels as if between two streets or so there is a community mosque and it's very understandable because this was the first establishment of an Islamic city in the region and it probably makes it even easier for the community to just get out of the door and then pray without having to walk the distance. This is such a cool find. It turned out that uh, Baruta is actually a well the well right there and it's 1400 years old it's pretty old and it was uh, first dug by the Abbasid and people have been using it since then there were a couple of uh, governors or bays maybe who maintained the well and added maybe some uh, marble and mosaic and uh, it's it's still there and it uses the Noria system this is a system that was mainly used in Syria but it was adopted in this area of the world and in other countries in North Africa like Morocco second day in Al Qairawan and I finally get to see the great mosque of Al Qairawan or Masjid Uqba ibn Nafi this is the person who founded the mosque 670 so it's pretty old the architecture is supposed to be amazing and I honestly cannot wait I will be taking you inside of the mosque and I will be probably praying there as well I am very very excited for that but first of all I have to figure out my attire and see if I can find a spot to grab a scarf to cover my head because I don't have one with me and we'll see if we can make that work so they do actually have uh, head scarves and they do have uh, long dresses actually for men, <laughs> the guy told me, but I have no problem. So I, have, I can wear that. That's great. I didn't want to buy new things. The reason I'm outside right now is because um, they told me that if I want to, to clean up and perform uh, ablutions, it has to be outside. There's uh, one for men and then the other one right there for women. They do have a bunch of restrooms, but then they also have rooms just with the hose you can probably clean up your feet here oh i'm gonna show you the other side too this is where you perform wudu actually they do have seats you can sit down and 
start your wudu or cleaning process and they also have sandals that you can wear Salam. Bismillah. Hmm, I like this one better. So they have here in the mosque, they have a closet with a bunch of dresses, but also headscarves that you can borrow. And I'm very happy with that because I don't have to buy anything new. Because I have very limited space on my backpack. <laughs> okay, I think we're looking good. And we are finally inside the mosque. This is the courtyard. It's open for everyone to visit. And foreigners do have to pay a fee to enter the mosque. And you can use that same ticket to visit other monuments around the Qairawan. Women are expected to wear head covering. Doesn't have to be scarf, but your head has to be covered. Decent clothing. And then for men, no shorts, or at least shorts that should be longer enough to cover your knees. Beautiful courtyard. There's the dome all the way up there very beautiful and then the minaret with a very unique shape compared to many other mosques around the world and they do actually have some construction going on on the minaret they have one main prayer room for men like the largest uh, space usually and then they have another prayer room for women so i'm gonna go in and show you what that looks like There is a, a secret terrace in one of the shops here. It's a carpet shop. They have a lot of carpet. And it's right in front of the mosque. This is actually something that I even noticed when I was in Tunis, the capital. They do have so many terraces, but then you look at a store, you, you wouldn't even think that they have a terrace that's open to the public. But then you get up there, it's like, wow! And wow, indeed. Oh my gosh, you can even look into the courtyard of the mosque. Incredible view. Wow, 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 wow. This is the terrace. Nice tile. Epic views from the terrace up here, that's for sure. And they do also have restrooms. I'm on a mission to find another terrace because there are actually plenty these are the outer doors of the mosque. They're huge. And also, I just got myself some kahwa arbi, Arabic coffee. It's so delicious. The smell of it, the taste of it, it's incredible. If you are here in Tunisia, you must try it. Look at the colors. So beautiful. Ah, dar lilla habiba. Anna is me Habiba. Dari Hedi. House of the Habiba. <laughs> Very nice view. Very nice view. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're still going up. I'm really enjoying uh, the treasure hunt, just going around the Medina and trying to find hidden spots for beautiful terraces, but the view from the terrace was incredible. This is the mosque of the three doors, clearly, because it has three different doors, and it's one of the places you can visit with the same ticket. It's closed right now, they open it just for prayers. There are two main doors right there for men, and then there's one for women, and they have uh, verses uh, from the Quran or prayers written on the wall beautiful and right next to it there are a bunch of shops we can just buy some souvenirs if you'd like ça c'est la main de Fatma quand vous trouvez une main il y a une famille si vous trouvez deux mains il y a deux familles pas de main c'est des célibataires disons qu'ils sont pas mariés elle c'est qui Fatma la fille du prophète Mohammed ça porte au bonheur et contre la mauvaise œil on le met ici quand quelqu'un il est beau il est joli alors on met la main de Fatma Contre la mauvaise œil, ça lui porte beaucoup de bonheur. Alors, tu as vu la maison là, bleue 
tout autour de la porte là, c'est les mosaïques de la mosquée du Barbier. Quand vous trouvez une maison décorée comme ça, c'est-à-dire que quelqu'un de la famille est allé visiter une fois la mère qu'on appelle Monsieur le Hajj. Et cette fois, fois à Kirouan, ça vous fait une fois à la Mecque. Parce que vous êtes à la ville sainte, à la quatrième ville sainte de l'islam. Salut. Waouh. Wow. Alors, le, le, le gouverneur, il s'assoit là-bas. L'orchestre est ici. Et le harem tout à fait là-haut. Dans, dans ce palais-là, il y a 17 pièces là-dedans. 17 chambres. Avant l'indépendance, hein. venez par ici, s'il vous plaît. Ça, c'est son bureau. Ah ouais. Ah. Regardez la coupole ici. Et c'est une grande maison de tapis, du mergoum, le kilim, le point noema, tout. Si on dit Kérouan, on dit la ville des tapis, les macros, les mosquées. This is another important monument here in the Medina of Al-Qairawan. This is a mausoleum, it's called Zawiyat Sidi Abid al ghariani And I already love all of the tiles and the colors, so we're going to go inside and check it out. This is another important monument to see here in Al Qairawan, the basins of the Aglabides, Fasqiyat al Aghaliba. These basins were built by the Aglabides when they ruled the area. The Aglabides basically came from today's Iraq and they were sent by the ruler of the Abbasiyin. And the reason he sent them here is to establish a government of their own and spread Islam. And they accepted to move from Iraq all the way here for one condition is that the rule of the Aglabides will always stay from the family of Bani al-Aglab. So all of the rulers will be from the family of Bani al-Aglab. And also, even though the Aglabides were still under the umbrella or the government of the Abbasiyin, they were promised that they can have some autonomy and come up with their own rules in the region. And these two are some of the basins that they built here. They were used to harvest water from the rain and help with the city's need for water. There's a large one right here and there's a smaller one all the way there. That's a large one, that's a smaller one. Funny, when I'm exploring, I'm so caught up, you know, just following my plan and seeing places that I completely forget about eating and it's becoming like my lowest priority until it starts hurting. Shukran, barakalafik. But the good thing is here in Tunisia they sell dates everywhere. So when I'm hungry, I grab myself some dates. Just bought a bunch from uh, up here and the dates in Tunisia are amazing. So this will be lunch for today. I'm inside the Zawiya of Sidi Sahabi or the Zawiya of Abu Zuma Al Balawi. This is a shrine. That's what the translation says, which I don't know if there is a difference between a mausoleum and a shrine. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. But this person, Abu Zum al balawi was a close companion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's buried up here. A mosque was built later on and the whole shrine. So I'm going to make my way up and see what's there. The architecture, the colors, it's beautiful. I love the tile. It looks very similar to the Zawiya we saw earlier. This is uh, the entrance to the mosque and then they have some admin offices for people who work to maintain the site and then the shrine or where uh, the Sahabi, companion of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is buried right there and I already see that they do have two baskets with the uh, headscarves and then you know just uh, more appropriate clothing that I can grab so let's do that. Is the burial site. 
I'm back near the mosque, the great mosque of uh, Al Qairawan, and the reason I'm back here is to see this graveyard. I believe it's called the graveyard of Wulad Farhan, uh, but I really like how all of the graves are painted white, the colors and with the brown on the on the walls and the masjid. It looks pretty neat. Uh, there is a square right here with some cannons for decoration purposes. But the reason I'm actually here is because there's another terrace that I'm trying to find, but I haven't been successful. I saw photos, I know what it looks like, but I'm not sure how to get there. So we're going on a treasure hunt. I have a feeling this is the one. <laughs> if it's the case, it wasn't really hard. <laughs> The police officer show, saw me taking some videos and then they said, Oh, did you check the terrace? So let's see. Is it the one? The view from up here is super, but this is not the one that I'm looking for. You can still see the mosque and you can see into the courtyard, which is pretty neat. However, I think the one I'm looking for is all the way there. I don't know if you guys can see the dome. It has some Arabic writing in yellow and blue. I think that's the one. It's right there. And in the way to get all the way up there to the terrace and see it is the, by entering this uh, association of Qairawan. I'm not sure what this association is for, uh, but they are closed. Let's see. Found this restaurant next to the mosque called Le Brija, El Brija and it has an incredible view i can see both domes so colorful so beautiful you can also see the mosque standing here and listening to the call of prayer an incredible feeling <laughs> 